Each time you meditate, start with thoughts of goodwill. Goodwill is a wish for happiness, a happiness that doesn't change, a happiness that doesn't turn on you, a happiness that causes no pain or suffering or harm to anybody at all. You wish it for yourself, you wish it for all living beings. We do this to remind ourselves that deep down inside this is what we really want. And to remind ourselves that this is why we're sitting here meditating. It's to develop the skills we need to find that happiness. Because it is a question of skill. And so we work on the mind so they can develop those skills. When we work with the breath, it may seem like a detour, but it's not. When you're with the breath, you're in the present moment. And you work with the breath to make it comfortable, to make it energizing, whatever the body needs right now. You're making it easier and easier for the mind to stay in the present moment. Why is the present moment so important? It's because this is where you're making all the decisions in your life. The things you're going to say, they're going to do, you're going to think. And it's important you try to do these things skillfully. You can get yourself worked up and tied up in knots about making mistakes. So to prevent that, that's another reason why we work with the breath. So you're coming from a state of ease and well-being. The more ease and well-being you can feel in this way, the easier it is to make the right choice. The easier it is to admit your mistakes when you see them, so you can react in the, to the mistakes in the right way. Right here being, being the way that's most effective and putting them to suffering. Because the mind does have this tendency to create a lot of suffering for itself. We all want happiness. Everything we do and say and think, every intention we have, is an attempt at finding happiness or finding at least some pleasure. And yet it often turns around and creates a lot of suffering. So this is why I have to bring a lot of alertness, a lot of mindfulness, bring our full attention to what we're doing, the choices that we're making. So we can begin to understand why is it that even though we aim at happiness and aim at pleasure and ease, we create suffering, misery, dis-ease. And we'll see it's largely because we're not paying attention to what we're doing and we're not paying attention to the results of what we're doing. So this is another good lesson that's learned from paying attention to the breath. Because you can see immediately the way you focus on the breath is going to have an immediate effect on how you sense the body, the mind's ability to stay in a sense of well-being or not. It happens right away. If you clamp down too hard on the breath or you force the breath in a mechanical way, it's going to get harder and harder to stay with a sense of ease in the present moment. The dis-ease will appear immediately. And so you try to notice, what kind of breathing would feel good right now? And this is an area where you can experiment. Longer breathing, shorter breathing, deeper breathing, more shallow breathing, heavier or lighter. And as you experiment, you begin to see that your actions, your decisions, your choices really do make a difference. And you also gain a sense of competence. That that you can do this, you can learn. There's that old saying, you can't teach an old dog new tricks, but it doesn't really matter what age you are. You can watch your breath, and you can learn from it. One of a John Fuhring students, a woman who had really strong powers of concentration, didn't start meditating until she was 70. She was suffering various illnesses, and she needed. She knew she needed something beyond just the medicine that the doctors were giving her. So she threw herself into the meditation. 
and learned an awful lot. She didn't have much of an education, but she learned an awful lot from the, the practice, just learning how to observe what you're doing and observe the results of what you're doing. And you can develop a lot of skill. And the skills you learn around the breath begin to they can be translated into the skills you, with which you deal with other things in life as well. Because you come to the breath looking for pleasure. You come to the breath looking for ease and well-being. Wherever there's any sense of discomfort or dis-ease, you do your best to work with it. Where you find things are going well, you try to maintain them. And when you see that there are things that are beyond your control, you let them go so that you can focus on the things that you can control. Now, these attitudes correspond to what you might call the social attitudes that the Buddha teaches. In other words, goodwill, compassion, empathetic joy, and equanimity. Goodwill is the wish for happiness. Compassion is when you see suffering, you want to learn how to put an end to that suffering. Empathetic joy is when you see there already is happiness, you don't resent other people's happiness, and you value your own happiness, so you try to keep it going. And equanimity is the attitude you develop when you realize there are some things you simply cannot change, and you don't want to waste your time on them. So as you work with the breath, you're developing these attitudes that you can then apply to situations in life. You want to approach every encounter with other people people you're close to and people you're not so close to. May all beings be happy. This doesn't mean you have to like people, and our wish for their happiness doesn't mean that you have a magic wand in your hand that can just go bing on their heads and make them happy. Because you realize that happiness has to come from causes. So your wish is, may this person understand the causes for happiness. May they not do anything that's going to cause unhappiness for themselves or other people. When you say that they are doing things of that sort, is there anything you can do to change, to help them stop doing those unskillful things? When you see that they are acting on the causes for happiness, you appreciate that fact. You don't resent their happiness. And if you see there's nothing you can do, well, that's when you develop equanimity. In other words, when you come from a good place with your breath, when you come with the right attitude toward your breath, it helps develop attitudes that are useful in life around you. In particular, this, I, this desire to be skillful in your choices, because our, our choices really do make a difference. I was hearing today of someone who was saying there is no such thing as a right or wrong decision. When we look all around us, of course there are right decisions and wrong decisions. The important thing is learning how to learn how to evaluate your decisions well, so you're not deluded, so you're not acting under the power of unskillful desire, unskillful aversion, delusion, unskillful fear. Notice that desire and fear can actually be skillful or unskillful. There's the desire to do something well. That's a skillful desire. <laughs> Any action is going to be motivated by the desire, so you have to learn how to read your desires to see where do they aim, what would their consequence, consequences be. And the same with fear. The fear of doing something unskillful is a skillful fear to, to encourage. The unskillful fear is when you're afraid to do something skillful because someone else might not like it or someone else might disapprove. That's where courage comes in. But the fear of causing dissension, the fear of creating trouble, that's, that's a fear that's, that should be encouraged. As for aversion, the strength of aversion is never skillful, but recognizing when something is wrong, that's a useful skill to develop. When you see someone is acting in an unskillful way, is there a skillful way that you can get them to change their ways? You can't use force with most cases. Nine times out of ten you can't use force. 
But there are other ways. Your power is a persuasion. So you want to look at your motivation to make sure that it's coming from a skillful place. The problem is, of course, the delusion. Delusion is never skillful. And it's the hardest one of these qualities to see. No matter how much you read in the texts and how much you hear things, you can still be deluded in your interpretation of the text. You can be deluded in how you hear things. So the only way you can test for that is to see if there's something you're not sure about and act on it to see what happens. Talk it over with other people first to get their perspective, and if nobody has any good ideas, well, at least try acting on it and see what happens, and then learn. This requires a lot of truthfulness, the willingness to see, okay, that was a mistake. Now, this requires a lot of maturity, and the maturity comes from mature concentration, a mature way of looking after your mind, so you don't feel invested in your decisions after you've made them insisting that they always have to be right, and at the same time that you're not tied up in knots over mistakes you've made in the past. You recognize you made a mistake, you learn from it, and you resolve not to repeat that mistake in the future. So there are a lot of qualities that are important in making decisions in life. Mindfulness, alertness, discernment, truthfulness. And the meditation helps develop many of those qualities. As you develop skill in dealing with the breath, develop skill in learning how to keep the mind here in the present moment with the breath. Because when other things in life are uncertain, you can know for yourself, okay, the breath feels good or the breath doesn't feel good. That's something you can learn to read and sense, regardless of the situation. And it's always good to be able to keep in touch with us regardless of how many other activities you have to be responsible for, how much is going on around you, it is always possible to at least keep some tabs on how the breath is going. And the effort put into learning how to keep the breath comfortable, energizing when you need energy, relaxing when you need to relax, that, always, that effort is always a good investment. It's a good background skill to bring into all situations. See, so here we have an hour to work on that skill. To try to make the most of it.